me. Go ahead and get started. I am just honored and grateful to receive this award that gives a glimpse into the complex role of the modern day school librarian. I'd like to thank School Library Journal and Scholastic for this incredible opportunity. I'd also like to thank the library supporters in my community, which include many volunteers, my family, my co-workers, who I spend so much time with that I refer to them as friends. My supporters make the impossible possible and dreams a reality. Have you ever had to stop and rethink or um, replan your vision? Or ask yourself, what is my purpose? What kind of environment am I offering in my library to reach my goals? Five years ago, I had to start over with a new library vision and plan. Five years ago, I found out I was losing my full-time library aide. She helped me keep everything organized. I was the big picture person, the planner, the person who often overbooked herself and said yes to everything. My aide took care of the details so I could focus on teaching, collaborating, and running the library. And just like that, the library aide position at the elementary level was eliminated. It was also five years ago that I came to the realization that I wasn't going to become a school principal. I went back to school to finish a second master's degree in principalship and received a principalship certification. I went on several interviews, but for whatever reason, I was never offered a position as an assistant principal. It was also at this time that my little girl was finishing fifth grade at the elementary school where I had been a school librarian for seven years. So I felt like it was the perfect time to get a fresh start somewhere else. I applied for a librarian position at an elementary school near my daughter's new junior high school. I got the job as the librarian at Ed White Elementary. Ed White is a small campus that has been around since 1965. So I was the new librarian there and it would be two more years before this little pirate joined me at Ed White. It wasn't long before I found out Ed White Elementary was thinking about becoming a STEM campus. I've always been more of a liberal arts kind of person, history major, theater enthusiast. I never saw myself as a STEM librarian. But I was most concerned about the future of the library with all of the plans for student field trips experiments, engineering challenges, I thought, how will the library remain an integral part of the school? I was afraid my library would become irrelevant. I was inspired one day at a faculty meeting. As we were having discussions about becoming a STEM school, my principal said to the faculty, do you just wanna to come to work and be told what to do? Or do you wanna be um, innovative and have a chance to be creative at work? I was inspired. This was also the year I learned about the work of Andy Plemons and Shannon Miller. Andy had lost his library aid and he still had a thriving library program. He was one of the first out there to create a makerspace. I was inspired by Shannon Miller's blog and plethora of innovative ideas she offered librarians and continues to offer. I had been a longtime fan of Mr. Shu and Donna Lynn Miller and their encouragement and views of creating a culture of readers. I was inspired by these internet education rock stars. I wanted to create a new vision. So my vision was that I would create the best library program possible for my East Stem Elementary campus. 
I wanted to offer a place where students could be innovative, creative, and develop their voice. As I researched, I learned that students develop their STEM identity in the library, which is when students develop their independent voice and contributions in the STEM fields of study. I wanted to remain the book specialist on my campus so I could encourage my students and fellow teachers to develop their reading life. So I gave it my all because I was developing something special and new. I collaborated with the public librarian, daycares, offered book clubs after school and during lunch, held student-driven events at Barnes & Noble, developed strong parent volunteer groups and student volunteer groups. And I just have to stop here and say, my volunteer groups really have changed what we do in the library. I've been a librarian at three different campuses, and whenever I start a library uh, program at a, at a school, I've always started with zero volunteers. And I just do two things. I ask for help. I ask uh, the community members, I ask other teachers, I ask older students, I ask high school students, especially if I was at a place where I didn't have a lot of parent support. And so the second thing that I do is I try to keep my library volunteers happy because if I keep them happy, they stay. And I do that by being very flexible with their schedule and then I, I give them choice. I let them decide how they wanna serve and volunteer in the library. So at Ed White, we've grown our uh, volunteer program to have 60 people on the books. So I've got 24 parent volunteers who help me with the um, robotics program. And then I've got 24 fifth graders who help me with uh, library circulation in the mornings on a rotating schedule. And then I've got 12 core volunteers uh, made up of parents and community members, and they help me with circulation, and they help me with uh, reshelving the books and special programs, and also with makerspace. So back to my purpose. I created a library makerspace, offered take-home makerspaces for students, mobile makerspaces for classrooms, collaborated with teachers, uh, librarians, community members, all for the sole purpose to offer my students the best library program possible so they could develop their reading life, strengthen their voice, and give them space to create. I grew up attending schools in Clear Creek ISD, and I now work in Clear Creek ISD. And we are a school district committed to excellence and that's true of our library department. The other librarians I work with are doing outstanding things in their libraries too. This is Tanya on the very end there, the long dark hair. Um, she's um, a librarian at Brookside Intermediate. She was having a problem getting students to participate in book clubs on her campus. She overcame this by offering a collaborative book club with her lit coach and public librarian. They meet at the public library once a month. Now she has a thriving book club with students from several campuses participating in her book club. And at the bottom here, you'll see a picture of Kelly Edmonston. She's the librarian at Mossman Elementary. We rallied behind her a few years ago to develop our own uh, district reading list the CCISD Trailblazers. We wanted to develop a reading list that would encourage the reading life of second and third grade students. And in the middle here, you'll see that's Shirley Dickey. She's our librarian at Clear Lake High School and one of the first librarians in our district a few years ago to arrange the fiction section by genre. After seeing this, I took her lead and became the first elementary campus in my district to genreify the fiction section. But with all of these great things happening in our library, we still had an image problem. Outside of the library, people's perceptions of the librarians hadn't changed through the years. 
Outside of the library, very few people saw us as leaders. So our library director, Susie Farrell, up there at the top, invited Follett Institute to lead us in a professional development to look at ways to lead outside of the library. When we finished this professional development, we realized we needed to work on our leadership skill set. We supported our library director to create a library conference that would focus on library trends and leadership. We successfully hosted a library conference open to all librarians in the area. We named it Setting the Trend, Librarians as Leaders. We are still working on being accepted as leaders in our community. Currently, uh, we have a committee that's taking the next two years to perfect our leadership skill set. Anyone can say they're a leader and even have coworkers nod in agreement. But effective leaders have certain qualities. There are three qualities of an effective leader that I'm currently working towards. Leaders build trust. Trust happens in a community. And to be a part of a community, the members need to get to know each other. One way to do this is through sharing stories. We are connected to each other by the stories we share. Take time to listen to other people's stories. Recognize we are on a journey, not a race, and it will take teamwork to cross the finish line. I strive to build and maintain uh, relationships built on trust and respect. I do this by letting people see me work hard on school initiatives and library initiatives. Collaborating on projects that will last years has built trusting professional relationships. It's okay for students to make mistakes and learn from mistakes. As a leader, I have to let perfectionism go and embrace learning from mistakes myself. Without fear of failure, I can develop grit and have a growth mindset. As I practice and promote resilience, I'm ameliorating my expertise on library topics so I can have the courage to stand up and promote my educational beliefs and keep trying even when things don't go as planned. It's all about the process in my library, not the final product. As my students develop resilience, I also develop grit. I've been reading a really good book. It's called The Innovator's Mindset, and I thought there was a perfect quote. I thought I'd share it. It states, leaders, whatever their role, affect change if they allow others to see them taking risks, failing, recovering, and taking risks all over again. So reflection. As I develop my library, I want to make sure that I take time to reflect. Have I asked for feedback? Have I pondered the feedback? How can I make it better? What should I do differently next time? What did I learn? Am I building a safe environment where people can create, collaborate, innovate, and develop their voice? These are all questions I want to reflect upon. Thoughtful reflection will lead to a stronger library program that is inclusive, empowering, and engaging. And that's the direction I want to lead my library. So right now, we're faced with a literacy crisis. And on the Laura Bush Literacy Foundation website, there were some very alarming statistics. A few of them were that worldwide, 750 million people over age 15 cannot read or write. And then I also saw a Stanford study, a recent Stanford study, that stated students have a difficult time evaluating the credibility of information found online. Children who do not read by the end of grade three have a one in eight chance of ever catching up and are four times more likely to drop out of school. Having books in a home results in children reading more often and for longer lengths of time. 
Having books in a home is more significant factor than family income in determining whether children, a child will be a frequent reader. Children and teenagers who read for pleasure on a daily basis score better on reading and writing tests than infrequent or non-readers. Librarians serve a unique role because we support all of the literacies in the library. So we can lead the way and do something about the literacy crisis. As librarian leaders, we can offer book clubs, reading challenges, and promotions to encourage the love of reading and developing a reading life. We can offer screencast videos, classes, individual help to help patrons promote and acquire information and digital literacy skills needed to critically navigate the internet. We can offer diverse books so all of our patrons can find themselves in our library books. We can offer programming to combat the literacy crisis. We can lead the way and develop collaborative partnerships with parents, teachers, administrators, community members to solve the literacy crisis. But even with all of that still in place, there's still room for innovation to cultivate literate lives. So I call on you, my fellow librarians, to take a leadership role and share solutions to end the literacy crisis. Thank you.